You're listening to The Common Constitutionist, broadcasting from an undisclosed location, free from the prying eyes of establishment black helicopters. So the Daily Beast reports that more than 50 intelligence analysts working out of the U.S. military's Central Command, or CENTCOM, have formally complained that their reports on ISIS and al-Qaeda's branches in Syria were inappropriately altered by senior officials. They say the cancer was within the senior level of intelligence command, one defense official said. What do you mean, was? You mean it's no longer there anymore? You mean we we can trust what they say now, that they're not going to change the intelligence reports? Of course not. There is no was. There only is with the Obama administration. Now, also, have if you get your news from any of the major news sources, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, whatnot, you probably haven't heard this news because, let's see, ABC devoted a full 18 seconds to it. NBC um, uh, didn't mention it at all, not even one time. And CBS, uh, on this morning, CBS is this morning, uh, they, uh, they presented it in 21 brief seconds. That's it. Fox did a full report on it, but that's to be expected. And the report is basically that the Pentagon altered intelligence data on ISIS, quote, to provide a more optimistic account of progress, unquote, against the terror group. Is this not astounding? Every time you hear it, it it's I, I don't it's not a surprise anymore, frankly, because we know all this administration does is lie. They lie about everything. They lie about the economy. They lie about Obamacare. They lie about education. They lie about uh, immigration. They lie about everything. Nothing they say is the truth. But this kind of stuff, this is life and death, literally life and death. Maybe not for us yet in the United States, but they're coming, brother. They are coming here. And when you get intelligence analysts that report that the fight is not going so great, that we're not winning, and then senior analysts decide to change it uh, because that's what they know. Here, the bottom line is um, it's like the Lois Lerner thing. Nobody in this administration that gets hired as a senior person in, in this administration has to be told what to lie about. They They already are of like mind with Obama. They know what he wants. They know what the administration wants. And the administration just lets them loose to lie and do whatever they cheat and steal and do whatever they need to do to further Obama's agenda. It's not like they have to have meetings on this stuff or not. If you're of like mind, that's the what you're going to think, that's what you're going to say, and that's how you're going to act. And that's what these senior intelligence, intelligence analysts know. They're, they're either of like mind or they're scared to death that the dictator-in-chief is going to can their butts if they say other than something other than what he wants to hear. And that's how dictators work. It's like, uh, who's the, the, uh, North, the North Korean, uh, man child leader, Kim Jong Un? When was, la- <laughs> when was the last time anyone ever said anything negative to him or about him to his face? That ain't gonna happen because, you know, you're gonna get an artillery <laughs> shot through the chest if you do, or something like that, killed in the village square. And so, these people that work for Obama, are either of like mind or they're scared to death of him, and so they just fudge the numbers to make him look good. The emperor's got no clothes, baby. So the the, uh, the somebody at the Daily Beast, I guess, talked to a former CIA deputy director, Mike Morell, who served during the Obama Obama administration, and he said one of the key aspects of policy making process in the United States is that analysts get to say what they think without any interference, without anybody changing it. Yeah, okay. So this is a very, very serious charge. I think it needs to be fully investigated. Um, what are the odds that this is going to be fully investigated? It ain't going to be investigated at all. And don't go saying, well, what about Congress? What about the Senate? They'll do something. They'll bring them up for hearings. Now, there'll be a bunch, if there are going to be hearings at all, it'll be a bunch of show hearings where they get to mouth off 
in front of the cameras. Um, the Republicans lo- get to look strong and tough, and then nothing ever gets done. Um, they get uh, whoever gets a small slap on the wrist, and if they do get canned, they get the golden parachute and they're off, or they're off to some other division in the government that nobody knows about. Or maybe they, <laughs> maybe they go off and uh, go to North Carolina State, State and teach women's and gender studies <laughs> for a couple of years, and then they come back into government. It's a revolving door. But this has always been the problem with this government, and it's not just Democrats. I mean, it's worse with Obama because he is, a, in fact, a dictator. Not even kings um, have wield this kind of power. Parliament usually has some say. Um, they can veto what the king says. But these these guys in the administration, the bureaucracy, they kowtow to Obama, the dictator, and there's not a thing they can do short of just resigning, quitting, or getting canned, one or the other. He doesn't like to hear bad news. He doesn't want bad news put out there in the press. Everything's supposed to be golden. Everything's supposed to be peachy. We're winning the war on terror. We're beating back ISIS with our one or two sorties a a week or whatever the heck it's down to now. It's pathetic. The Middle East is literally on fire over there, and we're doing absolutely nothing about it. We're just kind of waiting, biding our time until they come over here. Oh, yeah, and then the um, I did an article about the 10,000 Syrian refugees that are going to be, that the Obama administration is going to allow over here. And the intelligence people who were able to, for some reason, speak up before it got redacted, I guess, um, already said that we don't have enough intelligence on the ground over there in Syria to even vet these people, so we don't even know who the heck's going to be coming over here. So you know darn well it's going to be at least some ISIS or Al-Qaeda or some nefarious sons of guns coming over here. And if you look at the, you just go go Google a, a photograph, any photograph, and just put Syrian refugees and then click on images and then look at the images. All these images are supposed to be the Syrian refugees, all you see on camera, you see on these, these these little film clips of these women and children crying and moaning over the barbed wire and they can't get into the countries and so on and so forth. You look at, look at some of these photographs, these, these thousands and thousands and thousands of refugees waiting to get on these boats or were getting off of these boats, waiting to be accepted into Europe. Every Virtually every single one of them is a guy between the ages of 18 and 30, probably. Gee, I wonder what they're going to be up to once they get to where they're going, and some of them are going to end up here in the United States. But we're not going to hear about it, because senior intelligence officials will tell us everything is freaking rosy. So basically, with this um, enlightened information about intelligence, you, you basically, like I said before, you cannot... You literally can't believe a word that this administration says, which again calls into question this Iran deal. Exactly what is it that we're agreeing to? Because you know darn well that there's secret deals. Guarantee you there are secret deals between Iran, between us, and also between the Saudis and whoever else uh, can gain from this deal as America loses Um it's just, it's absolutely amazing that we as a country are allowing the Obama administration to just run ruckshot over us and our elected freaking wimpy officials don't do a darn thing. This guy should have been impeached long ago and removed from office, perp walked down the, uh, the aisles of the halls of, uh, the hallowed halls of Congress, um, in chains. That, uh, yeah, don't get all, it didn't change. Just get over it if that's what you're thinking. But this is, uh, this is a big deal. This is a huge deal when analysts are able to, senior analysts are actually able to change, um, data like this to make it look rosier than it is up until the, uh, the moment of impact, so to speak, if you know what I mean. I, I don't know. Uh, I just, we cannot get rid of this guy soon enough. Well, that's all I've got. I've got to go. Now I've got to go. Every time I do one of these things, I've, I've got to take an hour to decompress, take a few breaths, maybe have a drink or something. I don't know. Um, to calm, calm my nerves, come down a, a couple notches and a couple of octaves. 
But uh, that's all I've got. I, I hope you all have a great day. This is the Common Constitutionalist signing off, and we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>